Hey guys, Tessa Lamping here. Um, I just wanted to go over my trades today and an amazing indicator that you won't want to miss out on. Um, so I'll kind of make this quick but and um, I apologize for looking all sweaty and being in my workout gear. It's hot here and uh, I just got done with the workout. Um, so also, I've been adding workout videos to my YouTube channel, so make sure you check those out too. Have fun and I'll get all sweaty. <laughs> um, so today I traded DPLS, uh, as you can see right here. Oh, whoops. <laughs> so um, DPLS, hold oh, one second, let me do this, file, uh, load on top. Uh, it was, oh, wrong stock. <laughs> DPLS was a multi-day breakout. So, um, here's the highs. You click toggle that off. I have an, um, an alert set. That's what this lightning bolt is. Um, it's really easy to set alerts. Just add alert and put it at the price that you see. Um, and to kind of hide that, we just click that there, and then I have the previous close. Um, so you can see it was a third green day, and um, what I was looking for was um, the breakout above uh, this level right here, because then it doesn't really, I mean, it has a little bit of um, former resistance uh, intraday right here, which I'll uh, get into. But I'm not expecting resistance to live out right here. Now, obviously, um, it didn't make it there, which um, third green days, I don't quite expect them to run as far, but it's still good to be prepared for that. Um, ideally, it comes up, it consolidates for a couple days, and then breaks out. That would be awesome for it to go on a huge run. Um, so I have this on my watch list. Um, for consolidation or major panics, um, if it can't break out and go super supernova, even though it's already gone supernova, um, I'm also looking for panics. So next I'll get into uh, the five days and five minutes. I like looking at this because it gives me an intraday um, perspective. So you can see I have intraday lines right here because that could be... Um, a potential resistance. This could be a potential res resistance and this could be a potential resistance. Um, sometimes it could trade within this range, maybe break out, maybe it trades within this range and breaks down as you can see right here. On third green days I'm more looking for it to break down but unfortunately um, today I had to go shopping with my mom for her new diet so um, we didn't get back until right when it started panicking and uh, I didn't rush over to my screens like I should have. Uh, it just wasn't in my cards today. And so let me dive in a little deeper into my trade and I'll get to this amazing indicator that you, well actually I have two of them and I absolutely love them and not to mention this, um, uh, shoot, this amazing, I don't know what you, group of traders, really hard workers, um, trading uh, and coding engineers, <laughs> that's a good word, um, they are now partnering with Stocks to Trade with this uh, platform. So, um, all right, I can't keep it quiet. It's Scripts to Trade. Scripts to Trade, uh, I was helping out and maybe snuck the little word out there um, to Stocks to Trade and they partnered. So now um, Scripps to Trade is working with Stocks to Trade and these indicators are coming to Stocks to Trade. I'm so excited. Um, also, if you love these or want to try them out and you love them as much as I do, I'll leave my discount code in the description, which um, if you go to ScrippsToTrade.com, uh, when you go check out, discount code TESSA10, and you can get 10% off, I believe. Um, great deal. So, here, I'm considering it's a third green day. 
And uh, when I trade, I'm looking at stocks to trade and I'm looking at my E-Trade because E-Trade uh, is my broker. So I have E-Trade on one laptop, I have stocks to trade on this laptop. And last time I missed a breakout, it's because um, the stock spiked up, pulled back down to the support line where former resistance now became support. I should have dip bought it right there because then it went up. Um, so I did it this time. This stock I was watching, um, Tim Sykes, uh, my teacher, he actually bought at 0 .077, so right in here, um, probably because he thought that it had dipped, and right here was it going further. And I was just thinking, um, if I missed it, I mean, that's awesome that he got in right there, but once I saw him get in there, I'm like, okay, I don't want to touch it yet because when I get other people's opinions, I don't want to enter afterwards because then it doesn't feel like my own uh, um, patterns anymore. So what I did was I um, wanted to see it retest this um, former um, resistance, uh, now support, and I wanted to see it hold. So right here, I got it because of right here, and I just wanted to see it hold. Uh, also what I was thinking was uh, can it hold the high so this was the high right here well right up here but sometimes they don't hold it perfectly so I give it some wiggle room and it, I saw it and it held uh, this area I was kind of figuring like my thought process was if it pulls back and then starts to go up I want to be within that momentum moving upwards. And this is where um, I wish I had scripts to trade on stocks to trade because I could have probably had more confidence. Now, right, uh, confidence meaning um, taking a bigger position size. Uh, also, with more practice, I'll be able to do that as well. Um, but I just saw the level 2 start stacking, so I put my my buy order above the ask so that way and that momentum I can get filled upwards and so um, I got filled uh, right in here I don't remember the exact price I'd have to um, look it up which I think I just exited out of it on over here um, yeah but if you look at my profit we, uh, you can see it but I got in somewhere around here. I don't remember the exact price. I, I apologize. I should have been a little bit more prepared in that aspect. Um, but I also sold right in here into strength. I didn't make it to 789. I do remember my sell, and it was 776. Um, that I do remember. I only made about 2%, but um, that's okay. Because I'm really happy that I followed my plan. Uh, I bought into strength after it dipped, and I just sold into strength. Um, I was never down on my position. I feel like I waited patiently, and I sold when I saw the sellers taking out the buyers. There was like one bidder left, and I decided to sell. Um, I even put my sell order below the bid. Um, that way I have a chance of getting filled if it starts going down. And I got a better fill than I put my uh, sell order at. So I was really pleased with that. Um, now this is where Scripts to Trade comes in. Because I'm going to switch over to Thinkorswim. Which I didn't download what is called the Sentiment Indicator. Um, until after I was done trading. And that... I. I don't necessarily look at Thinkorswim to begin with during my trading day, but I use it to review my trades. And now that Scripts to Trade is partnered with Stocks to Trade and these are coming out, um, I'm not sure exactly when, but they're working on it. Um, I, I'm going to be using it on here and I am so excited because it makes it so much easier. Now you might be wondering why I don't use Thinkorswim for trading. It's just because I've grown up with stocks to trade it and Thinkorswim, it, I need to learn the platform a little bit better. But with my reviews, it truly helps. Now, 
Oh, this is Bill. I'll get to DPLS because I'm going to get to Phil in just a second. And oh my goodness, this makes me so excited. And I'm even going to be writing a blog post on this. Um, so I'm gathering data, <laughs> which I will take. Ah, oops. A screenshot. Nope, oh, maybe I should smile because that's probably going to be a creepy photo. <laughs> um, so I'll let that kind of disappear. Oh, maybe it's not. Okay, there we go. So, geez. <laughs> um, anyways, so right here you can see this is where I bought. There, uh, if, okay, first I'll explain this. This is the abnormal volume indicator. These are the arrows, and I absolutely love this because it's perfect with my pattern for that spike, consolidation spike. And so um, this was a dip buy, so there wasn't as much strength here but there was strength here so you could sell into strength but the whole point um so this indicator i love for plays like phil which i will get into um right there <laughs> um also so because i'm going with dpls first this is the gap stat indicator um which i also love but i'm also not as technical but this helps me a little bit more for um, for screen day overnight holds for the statistics on the gap ups. You get uh, gaps up, average gap up, average spike after gaps up, um, average spike into the close. And it has all this back tested data. So if you're wanting to track your trades, track patterns, I highly recommend um, the gap stats uh, indicator. Also on scripts to trade. And don't forget discount code TESSA. Because um, then it gives you all this information that you'd be missing out on and might be a little bit hard for you to figure out in the beginning um, to backtest all these patterns. So my little trading cheat code there. <laughs> um, also, um, with DPLS, I missed this. But I love the abnormal volume indicator because it shows just all this panic. Now, uh, like I was saying that before, and... Um, the third green day, I'm more than likely looking for the stock um, to panic because I'm, it's just a, it's a third green day, and that's usually what happens. Um, I will include a link to Timothy Sykes' um, Penny Stocking Framework DVD, which goes into detail about this uh, seven-step framework with this pattern, which I absolutely love. And I actually am really bummed that I missed this, but it was into the close, which I don't really like to break my rules and dip by into the close, because um, the, the odds of them bouncing aren't as good as them bouncing in the morning. But when I see this pattern as clean and as beautiful and perfect as this, I usually get a <laughs> little... Poochie fingers and I can't resist it. So um, I am bummed that I missed this. So it's bittersweet. Anyways, I did bought there and I sold into strength there. But um, what I love about that normal volume indicator in this is instance, since it's not really my pattern, the spike consolidation spike pattern, except for right there, that would have been uh, decent, but not my ideal setup. What I love about this is it shows that there's panic selling, panic selling, panic selling. Okay, and then there's a lot, a lot, a lot, tons of um, uh, abnormal volume right here, which shows that, um, I mean, I doubt that short sellers are shorting a stock under 25 cents, but there's a lot of moment or there's a lot of momentum. There's a lot of buyers coming in, and it's great to show that hey, you can see that there's panic selling there, panic selling there, panic selling there, but it's still downtrending. Right here, you get tons of abnormal volume, and it's starting to go up. So you can buy somewhere down here and then sell into strength. And there's a lot of volume to be able to do so. And then if it continues going down, you just boom cut losses quickly. Um, because usually if you get good enough at level two, you can see the turn and you can get out with not always guaranteed. So you have to be really careful. But I love the abnormal volume indicator for this. But the sentiment indicator, I am so excited about if you can't tell. Um, not only 
am I excited for it? Because look, you can see the green, you can see white, and you can see red. But it helps my confidence. Um, that's a really big thing with my trading is my confidence. And so um, with this, I'm not trading 100% based on this indicator, although they have really, really good uh, results. I think last month was 80%. Excuse me. I can also leave a link to Scripps to Trades blog post. I believe it's on the sentiment indicator. Um, or, or I think they have posts on the sentiment indicator, and I believe this is the one where last month they have an 80% win rate. Um, maybe that's with a different indicator, but regardless, their indicators have phenomenal results. But as always, um, it's more, it's a guideline. Um, it's for educational and entertainment purposes only. So don't base your 100% um, trading decisions off of any indicator or anything, even VWAP. Um, it, it's more it, it's more information to give you a trading edge. So as you can see, um, I did bought the stock right here and I sold into strength. Um, had I had this on stocks to trade at the time, I mean, because they're working on this. Goodness, like, oh. <laughs> um, it would have been incredible, and it's actually, um, I need a third laptop just to have this indicator on it right now, but with their um, partnership, Stocks to Trade is going to be literally the ultimate trading platform that none other can beat. Um, so I could have rebought into here um, and then just kind of held and then looking for it to break out of the high a day. Um, and then obviously if it started breaking down, first off, um, if I bought right here, uh, right in here, I'd be risking right here. So if you're noticing right here where I'd be risking, had I held into this instead of walking in profits, blah, 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 and had patience, you'll see that my risk right here on the left lines up with the white and red on the right. So uh, when it's up here above this risk, it's showing that it's uh, bullish. And you'll see right here where it's green and says strong bullish. But as it comes closer to that risk level, it's like uh, it could go either way, be on your toes. And then it starts going up. So it's like, okay, we're still uptrending. But then it starts coming down and testing, and it's like, okay, you need to be on your toes to cut losses quickly. And then when it hit red, you'll notice that that's a huge trend change. Not only did it break this support, it broke this support, and it's red, and it'll say strong bearish. So um, this is amazing for the trend change, and it's called the sentiment indicator. And I absolutely love it. Discount code TESSA10. Don't forget that. Um, it helps you. It helps me. It helps everyone. So um, uh, here's that big panic. And you can just see that um, it's bearish. And I absolutely love this. Because um, when, when I'm going to trade, I'm, you see the pattern. You see the red. You see the green. And it's like uh, emotions up and down. And I just appreciate the um, clarity of like, okay, it's, to me, um, everyone talks about being less emotional trading, because trading is, it can be very emotional. Um, so by just seeing this, it takes the emotion a lot more out of it. I can feel more confident in my setup and my pattern and my overall big picture instead of focusing on every little tick. Now, I know some, sorry for making this video so long, um, some people t will put their, um, their charts on like 5 minute or 10 minute, 15 minute, 2 minutes, whatever, so that way they're not focusing on every tick. Well, I like the 1 minute candles and I use the 5 and the 15. I, I switch it up, I use a lot of different things. But I just appreciate how this lets me see kind of the bigger picture. So when I see that it's green, it's like, obviously I want to sell on this strength. 
Um, but I can also see that, okay, this is a good risk. Okay, this is a good risk. It's a higher risk. So maybe um, instead of risking right here, I move my risk up to right here because that's a pullback and it held above this. But I can have um, less of an emotional feeling when I'm not seeing all those red candles because it's not like, oh gosh, is it going to break? Is it going to break? Is it going to break? Um, it's more like, okay, it still says that it's bullish. Now, I'm not basing it 100%, but um, it says that it's bullish, so I can have a little bit more confidence. If it breaks below this, it should maybe turn white. And then if it breaks below that, it should turn red because that's a trend change. So by having just these basic colors and not the stress of red tick, uh, green tick, red tick, green tick, I... Um, I love it. It's a huge game changer changer um, for me psychologically. And I think that's one of the biggest parts of trading. Not only is it tricky to recognize patterns, which you have to get used to, um, but also uh, just the emotions about it, the psychology behind it. And I am just beyond stoked that I finally got this indicator. And I think it will help you guys a lot too. So, um, oh, sorry, I'm still all sweaty. I'm just super excited. Um, next I want to go over is PHIL. Um, PHIL, get this switched over, PHIL. Now, this one I'm also super excited about. So you have the gap stats up here, which, um, 855% gap. So that one, um, and when it's on its run, so probably back in the day, um, I mean, it can have a huge gap up, especially um, when it goes from sub penny to when it's being promoted. But um, so we're looking at the breakout, which was it was Monday, so Friday. Friday it had a multi-day breakout, so this is day two. Um, pardon me, of a multi-day breakout. So. Um, you can see that it broke out right here into the close, yes, or um, Friday, and then uh, it had a continuation uh, this morning and so on. So um, I love having multiple charts too. Um, but anyways, this one I'm actually kind of um, bummed about how I performed. I didn't even trade it because... I, um, I need to establish with myself, like, hey, the first at least two hours, even with a slow market, I need to be 100% focused in on um, what's going on in the market. Now, um, lately, the market's been so slow that I've been giving in about an hour, maybe hour and a half, and then um, get, getting on with my day, calling into, uh, checking in on the market, because there, there hasn't been much of anything. So, um I did that today, and that was a mistake, um, especially on Mondays at least. Um, I think it's Monday. Yeah. <laughs> um, so especially on Mondays because everyone's um, excited that the weekend's over and they're ready to trade, ready to get see the place, news is coming out, whatever. Um, so on Mondays, I'm going to be like insanely focused um, because this was just beautiful, and I missed out on it. So let me show you on stocks to trade first. Um, PHIL. Uh, so, um, this is what I look for. This is my spike, consolidation spike. And you can even see I have my alert. It went off. So, immediately it's on my watch list, even though it's already on my watch list right here. Um, uh, and DPLS is right here. Which I post my watch list to Profitly every single night and on weekends. Um, I, I don't have a specific night. Sometimes I'll do it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, but I do post them on Profitly every single night, which I'll also leave a link to. Um, so that way you guys can check out my watch list. Um, but this one, I saw that it spiked, but it wasn't a huge spiker. And... I was like, all right, so it's another one of those days. But then I saw that it broke out, and it's like, okay, well, now it's, it's on its run. It, it's too high for me. Um, and it's just not a pattern that I can recognize. So this is another thing that I'm going to be paying attention to. Um, and why I say the first at least 
two hours, so 9, 10, 11, so 10, 30, 11, 30, so till right here, at least the first two hours, now I know a lot of traders say the first hour, but with my experience, I need the first two hours to even have my pattern set up, and uh, uh, it varies. Ideally, you have that big spike in the morning, pulls back, consolidates, and then spikes out, kind of like you can see right here. But it's not an exact science. And so this one, um, it spiked up, uh, pulled back, spiked out again, pulled back, spiked up again, then consolidated. Because see this tight consolidation where this is clearly um, the top of this, this channel. And once it breaks that, it can go to the moon. Not really, but um, it has great odds of going up. And this is the pattern that I live for. Uh, I have the best win rate on this pattern. And I'm really, really, really bummed that I missed it. And there's no excuse for it other than I need to be right there for the first two hours of the market. So um, this is where I absolutely... Um, Sorry, I keep saying, um, I love uh, the scripts to trade abnormal volume indicator because look, it's the, just beautiful. It was spot on. There we go. And you can see it just right there. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. Now, this stock didn't have a ton of volume, but. It, it's just beautiful because you can see right here it's been bullish all day you can feel pretty confident about holding it of course have your own plan don't just go off of the sentiment indicator or that not normal volume indicator but um, this is it doesn't get any more beautiful than this you got this spike consolidation I like to buy when volume comes in and it breaks out of this consolidation and then selling into strength. This is one where I would have sized up on because it just is so beautiful. And I, that is so important right here that you have this abnormal volume indicator because sometimes you get so busy, especially when you're being emotional about the trade and uh, you forget to look at the abnormal volume on the bottom right here um, that when the arrow pops up, it's just nice. Like, oh yeah, there's the volume. Let's get in. Um, and then sell into strength because you always want to lock in those profits. You don't want to just hold and hope. Even if you have an amazing indicator such as the abnormal volume indicator and the sentiment indicator. Now, in a hot market, ideally, I would be holding this overnight, looking for a gap up the next morning, but you can also see the um, gap up statistics. Now, I'm not the most statistical person. I'm hoping by having this up here, I'll learn a little bit more and be able to be like, oh, okay, I get that. Um, so I'm learning too. Anyways, um, I'm not holding stocks overnight right now because when I hold them overnight, they tend to get da gap down over 10% or whatever like that right now. So when the market gets hot again and gap ups uh, after the first green day overnight holds start working again, I'll be right in on it. But right now, I'd rather lock in safe, solid profits. And um, I mean, you could even... How I'm trying to analyze this is, okay, I buy right here, I sell into strength. I let it form again. So you got that low, you have a higher low, which you can now risk this one. So you can dip by this. Now, based on over here, I'm not going to get in because I don't know what's going to go on. But I have that red and green that's making me emotional. And I recognize that. Excuse me, and I'm calling myself out on it, and that's okay. I recognize it. So, how can I go from there and improve? I switch over to the sentiment indicator, and I see okay, clearly this is a pullback. Now, I know this is trading in hindsight, and hindsight is always 2020, 
Um, but this is a good way to analyze these setups, to ingrain them in your memory, and learn from them and improve. Um, so it pulls back higher low, dip buy in here, risk there, either sell into strength, maybe even hold, because now it's even a higher low. So then um, if you're buying here, you can now risk this maybe, or maybe you still want to hold there, I don't know. Um, still learning about that, um, and then maybe selling into strength because it broke out of this tight consolidation because maybe some people will buy there, it'll get stuff because it's also midday, and middays aren't always hot, especially in slower markets, so um, perhaps selling into strength, and then um, again, uh, now this one, it, it looks like uh, it turns white when it, it sees this as a key support. So it turns white saying like, okay, get prepared. This could break down if you're risking right here. Now that's probably a better risk than moving it up to right here. Um, so if you're in right here and you haven't taken profits in the strength, perhaps keeping this risk is the key risk level. And I love this because um, it makes me pay more attention to that and not feel emotional about it. It's like, okay, um, here is this key support level if that breaks, be prepared to cut quickly, because then it's a trend change. But instead, it's like, all right, all right, on the fence, and then pulls back and still continues kind of into strength, actually makes a new high, and then closes fairly strong. Now, typically in a hot market, I'll be on this all night, or all day, and maybe this will actually help me improve holding longer and forming a big picture thesis. So, um... There's so much to learn about this, and these were the two trades, uh, or two main watches for me today, and I am just so in love with the sentiment indicator and the abnormal volume indicator. If I was more technical, I love the gap up stat, or gap stats too, which I'm even not being technical. I love having that data, um, to judge off of, but... These two are absolutely hands down, as of right now, my favorite indicators and I wanted to go kind of in depth and show you my process, my thoughts, um, and walk over this indicator with you how I'm using them to um, improve my edge and give you some of my trading cheat codes. <laughs> um, so. Uh, hopefully this video helped you. Don't forget discount code TESSA10 and be excited with me and tweet at me, um, test lamping on Twitter, and show me pictures of how much you love scripts to trades, indicators, and how you use them to uh, give you that little trading cheat code edge um, to your trading. So again, leave a comment, leave a like, hit subscribe, and don't forget to uh, check out my workout videos too keep you engaged during the trading day. All right, everyone, have a great night, and I'll see you later. <laughs>